In this video, I'm going to explain the process of exporting our high and low poly objects from Blender into a state that they can be used for baking. So we're going to export our, our high and low, then we're going to bring it into Momset Toolbag. You can also do this in Substance Painter, but I prefer using Momset Toolbag. Here you can see a resonance that I recently created. And um, I'm just going to use the coffee can helmet for this example. Uh, as like the process for all the objects is going to be pretty much the same. So we'll probably make it a little bit shorter if we just do the coffee can. So I'm going to hide our kill and verse. And here we've got the helmet. And you can see on this helmet, I've got all of the parts split up into their names, how we showed in the other videos. And we've also got the each of the individual parts uh, separated into different materials. That's going to be useful for when they're ID baking. So when you're in this state, we're just going to go ahead and select the whole object. We have File, Export, OBJ. And then I'm going to on the settings, we're going to use these settings here. So selected only UV coordinates, normals. Uh, you can turn on triangulated mesh, but if you've got a quad mesh, it's fine to leave as it is. And then I'm just going to call this Y. And then I'm going to export that. This might take a second, but that was pretty quick. Um, and then we're going to hide that high poly. We're going to our low poly and on the helmet. And this is our low poly that we fixed in our other tutorials. So it's got the fixed UV map. So again, just selecting the coffee can helmet, going file, export, OBJ. And the same settings. You want to make sure you haven't got triangulation on for this one. And then we're going to call this low. And we're going to bring our high and low objects into your mom's tool bag. So here I've just got a blank workspace, a new file. And I'm going to go to click, right click in this uh, area here. Go on, add a big project. And then on the quick loader, we're going to click that. We're going to navigate to our high and low we just exported. We highlight both of them and press open. That's going to bring in the high and the low and split them into our naming conventions. So here you can you can kind of see why we've done that in Blender. So that we've got our low and our highs and then it's separated into individual folders. This is a really neat way of doing it. And then here's our low poly. And we can also show our high poly by hitting this H here. You can hide the low by pressing the L. So I'm just going to low poly and then there's some standard settings we want to use for rust so tangent space is fine the tangent calculation should be vertex tangent orientation should be right-handed we're gonna set a path for all the maps that we bake so I'm just gonna use this tutorial bake folder and then this suffix, you can just name it whatever you like. So I can just call this coffee can, click save. And then output settings. I normally do the highest uh, anti-aliasing, so it gives the best results. Format 8 bit is fine, padding moderate is fine. Texture set, so if you're working on a an old or star PC, you probably want to Keep these at the same resolution that your object is in game. So most objects in Rust are 1K, but you can you can double check this and match them the same. So I normally bake in 4K just because my computer can handle it. And then when I come to rendering, I've got like a nice uh, high quality uh, set of textures that I can use. It gets well, it's better for presentation, but yeah, it's not necessary as these will get downscaled when we go to Rust anyway. Um, and here we've got our maps that are configured. So these are the ones that I use. Um, so we've got normals, normal object, curvature, ambient occlusion, and albedo. We're making our albedo so that those textures we applied in Blender 
we'll show on our low poly and that's going to be really good for making our ID map. So once we've got this all set up, we can just go ahead and hit bake. This all vary on how good your computer is, how fast you bake that. It's very quick and then we can press this E here to preview our bake. And you can see how it's not going to great. And this is basically because we haven't set our offset yet. So we click on an individual part of the helmet. We scroll down to here. We click on the low. We need to change this offset here. So if I turn on the high. You can see how like uh, our cage isn't encompassing the high fully. So because these parts are sticking outside of the this wireframe or our cage, they're not baking onto the low poly. So we can just increase that by clicking on the low, then changing our max offset so that it encompasses all of the, the high poly. And then you want to do that on all of your parts. So that should be good. And then the strap as well. Increase that. You don't want to go wild on the, the size of your cage. You just want to make sure it encompasses your height. Then we can go ahead and bake this again. You can see we've got a lot better result. Everything looks like it's baking well. And then you see like areas like this where we've got, this is actually the ambient inclusion causing these errors. So you see how we've got errors here. That's because we're taking so like the ambient occlusion is coming across from each of the individual groups, but we can fix that by clicking on that cogwheel of ambient occlusion, hitting ignore groups, and then our ambient occlusion doesn't pass from each of the individual groups. So we hit bake again. Let me see that's a lot better. I'm pretty happy with this bake now. So you can see like we've got different colors here. These will be used for ID map when we're in Substance Painter. You can preview your other maps here, your normals, normal object, curvature, and ambient and inclusion. But it's looking pretty good. Sometimes, uh, if you've got like distorted uh, features on your low poly, you can actually fix this with the skew. So, if I go to this part of the mesh, click on the low, we can also paint the skew which changes how the the low poly uh, like uh, baking is angled from the individual faces of the low poly. It's sort of like a, we can reduce the averaging and they can give us better results. So here, I'm just going to paint black with these bolts. You see how it's moved because we're baking more 90 degrees to these faces and not averaging out over this corner. So if we bake this again, yeah, you can see how now the it's like a clean circle, but it's uh, breaking into the mesh. So I mean, I think it was fine as it was before. So I'm just going to clear that. Bake it again. That looks fine. I mean, you're, you're never going to get like a a perfect perfect bake because. We're working with a low poly that's been provided to us and then we're adapting our high poly. We're not working in the normal workflow, but I, I think this is pretty good. At this point, we're, we're pretty much ready to go into Substance Painter and start our texturing. Um, I'll just show you the maps we've generated. So here you can see the folder we've exported our maps. We've got the albedo, the AO, the curvature, the normal, and the normal object. So they're ready to go into a Substance Painter now. You can also bake other maps in Marmoset Toolbag. Like they just added the uh, option to bake uh, lighting or emission maps. That was really interesting. I probably covered that in another video. Something that allows us to like uh, bake neon lights and glow on our skins. It's really useful. We can also bake things like um, alpha mass. So when we're making skins that have parts of the mesh hidden, so like uh, this part here was hidden, this metal grill, we could turn on our 
alpha mask and it would create a black and white mask that we can use for them to paint it to hide that mesh. Um, then we've also got things like um, cavity. So you can bait like the cavity map. So any areas where the high poly is indented more, you'll get a white area on that map and a black area on the bits that are extruding more. It can be useful for texturing, thickness, yeah. You can sort of like bake the however thick your high poly is from your low poly. You get like a variation in the white and black of that map. Yeah, they, they can be useful, but they're normally for specific applications. So I'm not baking those on like every object. I think that covers the baking part of this tutorial series. Next, we're going to bring our maps into Substance Painter and start some texturing. I hope you found that helpful. I'm going to leave my Discord in the description as usual. You can ask her for help and we've also got some other fixed uh, objects from the workshop as well.